Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to start a new series in a lot more detail about light interference. So here we have an example where we have a double slit, and it's called Young's double slit because the experiments were first done by Young and the write-ups were done by Young in how light interacts when light shines through a double slit. At the far end here we have a screen at a fairly large distance away from the double slits. The distance between the slits, called D, is very, very tiny compared to the distance from the source here, the slits, to the screen on the other side. Now what's going to happen is when light shines through a very small opening, light diffracts. That's the case in any kind of wave. If a sound wave goes through a small opening, it will bend around the corners and go in all directions beyond the opening. If water wave goes through a small opening, the waves will go all the way around the corner in all different directions. And light waves are no different. When light waves, light waves go through a small opening, they will what we call diffract, bend around the corners and go in all different directions. Which means that the light that goes to the top slit will essentially shine on all of the screen over here on the other side. And the light going to the bottom slit will also shine on the whole screen here on the other side. Which means the light patterns from both slits will come together everywhere along this slit. But if we then take a look at the slit, what we'll find is we'll see regions where the, the screen is lighted up and you have a bright spot. And then there's regions where we have a dark spot and it interchanges. We'll go from bright to dark to bright to dark to bright to dark and on both sides of what we call the central maximum spot. So in the very center, they call this the central maximum. That's the spot directly across where the two slits are and that's where the two beams come together and you'll see a bright spot. Then on either side of it we have a dark spot, then we have a bright spot, dark spot, and bright spot and so forth and that's called an interference pattern. The question now is why do we have an interference pattern and how do we actually analyze it and how can we find the intensity of the light at various locations on the screen relative to where the two slits are. Well, for one thing what we have to realize is that there is a path length to travel from the slit to a spot on the screen. And notice the spot directly across from the center and what I want to show is that even though the way I have this drawn here, it doesn't appear that those two lines are parallel. In essence, they really are because as I've drawn here, the distance between the slit is usually very, very tiny and the distance across here is very large. Usually the ratio is some somewhere in the order of a thousand to one or something like that. So it's a huge distance to the screen, very small distance between the slits so that essentially these waves are in all intended and purposes parallel to each other. So when they reach the other side, they've traveled a distance from the, from the slit to the screen parallel to each other and they come together and you can see that because this spot right here is directly across from the slits, the distance traveled by those two light waves, the path of that light there, is exactly the same. So when the, the waves were in phase at this location, they will still be in phase when they reach there. Remember with waves, we've studied that in mechanical waves, when waves come together, if they're in phase, there will be constructive interference, and when they're out of phase, there will be destructive interference. What do we mean by out of phase? Well, for example, if two waves come together, and they're like this, and they reach the same point, and they're completely cohesive, and they're in phase at the exact same spot in their wave when they come together, we call that constructive interference, and as a result, the two will be additive, and we have what we call constructive interference, where the magnitudes are additive, and you can see that this will be the result of the two waves coming together. When that happens at the central maximum point, we we'll see a bright spot there because the two light waves constructively interfere with each other and therefore made it a bright spot. But what happens when one, one wave comes in and the other wave comes in and when they come in they're exactly 180 degrees out of phase. 180 degrees out of phase. Well when that happens they will destructively interfere with one another and the result is that you have no wave at all. So they will completely destroy each other. There will be no energy to be seen at that location and that would be the places where you have a dark spot on the screen. How does that happen? Well, take for example this first dark spot right here and let's draw a line from this location to the first dark spot and from this location here to the first dark spot. So maybe I should use a different color otherwise it gets a little confusing here. So let me try my purple line. So let's draw a purple line over here and the other purple line over there. There we go. So you can see that a little bit better. Now, 
what I'm saying here is that the distance to go from there to there is not quite as large as the distance to go from there to there. There's a slight additional path length, a slight additional distance the bottom light has to travel to get to this point compared to the top light. And because of that, when the two ways get there together, they will no longer be in phase. If it's completely dark, that means when that second ray gets there, it had traveled a little bit farther. How much farther? About a half a wavelength. If it had to travel a half a wavelength farther, and they were in phase at this point, they will be a half a wavelength out of phase, or 180 degrees out of phase when they get to that point. And when they're 180 degrees out of phase, the two waves will destroy each other, there'll be destructive interference, and you'll see no light at that point. How do we calculate that extra distance? Well, if you draw a line perpendicular to this ray right here, from this point right there, you can see that from this point to this point, from these two points onward, that's exactly the same distance. Again, imagine that these are really essentially parallel to each other because this distance is so small compared to that distance right there. So these two lines are parallel from that point to that, from these two points, the distance here is exactly the same when you get to that point. So this here is the extra distance traveled. This is considered what we call the extra distance. And how do we find out what that is equal to? Well, if this is the distance between the two slits, and this is the angle, call it theta, that these two rays make with that spot right there, so from there to there, and again, remember that this is the same angle for this ray as it is for that ray because they're so close together. So we're talking about this angle theta right there, which is the same as this angle theta right there. So this is the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse. And so we can say that extra distance is equal to the hypotenuse d times the sine of theta. Now, the sine of theta is a very small quantity because theta is a very small quantity. These are very, very tiny angles. These are very small distances compared to this distance right here. So since it's a very small angle, we can say that this is approximately equal to d times the tangent of theta. When I say approximately, it's probably within 0.1% or something like that. Very small difference. And then we can realize that if we call this distance right here from the bright spot to dark spot, if we call this distance equal to y, a distance away from the bright spot, and we call this distance from here l, this would be the opposite side. This is the adjacent side of the angle theta. So we can say that this can also be written as d, which is the distance between the two slits, times the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So we can say that the extra distance traveled by the second ray compared to the first ray would be equal to d sine theta, which can be said to be d tangent of theta, which is d times this distance divided by this distance. In other words, if we know the, this quantity right here, dy over l, that's the extra distance traveled by the second wave. And if that extra distance traveled is, for example, a half a wavelength, if, the extra distance traveled distance is equal to one half of a lambda, one half a wavelength, that will then put those two waves a half a wavelength out of phase. A half a wavelength is 180 degrees, and at that point there will be destructive interference. However, if we look at a point a little bit further up on the screen, notice that would require a bigger angle, and let me use a different color. Let me see if my red pen works right here. There we go, it kind of works. So now we're looking at a larger angle theta, okay? So d sine theta, if theta is larger, that means there's going to be an extra distance traveled, which is now greater, so my extra distance traveled is now greater, and that's gonna be the sine of theta equals the tangent of theta equals y over l, which means y is now bigger, and if the extra distance traveled now, instead of being a half a wavelength, is now a full wavelength, then the two rays are back in phase. Then the extra distance, if extra distance traveled, is equal to a whole wavelength, then the two rays are back in phase, then instead of destructive interference, we are back to constructive interference, and if we have constructive interference, we'll see a bright spot on the screen again. Then again, if we make the angle even bigger, Again, we're not really making the angle bigger. What we're doing is we're simply looking on the screen and we're going a little further up the screen and at that spot, it becomes dark again. 
Well, why does it become dark? Because now the extra path length will be one and a half wavelengths for the second wave, for the second ray instead of the first ray. If the extra distance is, and let me write that down. <clears throat> so if the extra distance is not equal to one and a half lambda, then the two waves will be again a half a wavelength out of phase, a half a wavelength, 180 degrees, means there's destruct interference, and we'll see another dark spot. And then if we look a little further up the screen, to a point up there, so that the rays go up even steeper than that, the extra distance travel will now be two lambda, so we can say that if the extra distance traveled is equal to two times lambda, then again you'll have a bright spot on the screen and so forth and so on. So if you keep looking higher and higher up, we can see that we have, again, at that point when the two rays come together, from the two slits right here, the extra distance, the higher up the screen you go, the greater the extra distance, and then you alternately go from a half to a full to one and a half to two to two and a half to three wavelengths of extra distance traveled, which that causes the light here to alternately become constructively or destructively interfered and because of that, we'll see bright and dark and bright and dark spots on the screen. So that's the general principle of that. And that's how we know that the path length difference causes a phase difference in the light reaching the screen, which therefore causes light and dark spots to appear on the screen. In the next 10, 15 videos or so, we'll show you an exact methodology of how we can calculate where those spots will occur. And not only that, we'll be able to calculate how the brightness and darkness changes as you look at different locations on the screen as a function of how the light interacts with each other when it comes to the two screens. And then finally, we'll go ahead and change it to three slits, four slits, five slits, and see how that pattern changes with additional slits. And in the, in the end, we'll do n slits, any number of slits, and see what the pattern will look like. What you'll end up seeing is that there'll be this sine wave function of the brightness. So here we have a bright spot, then it's a dark spot, a bright spot, a dark spot. You can see how the brightness and the darkness, the brightness and the darkness ultimately changes as you look higher up or lower down the screen away from the central maximum. And we'll be able to come up with equations and exactly describe what the intensity will be at any location as a function of angle or as a function of position on the screen. So if you're interested in this and you want to understand this better, take a look at these videos. I'll try to explain it all for you. This is how we do that.